Just look to, you have to make an observation of what's going on in, in the banking sector, okay? And so uh, you look back, there's a lot of crises during the last 50 years, 60 years, you know. Yeah, I remember the Continental Illinois Bank, the Republic uh, National Bank, the Herstadt Bank, all having challenges back in, in different time periods. And obviously, just recently, 15 years ago, was Lehman Baron and so on. But the one that sticks in my mind for this meeting, for this conversation, is the fact that in 1989-90, you had a savings and loan crisis, duh. Mm -hmm. And what the accountants did, and this is important, the accountants passed a rule that said, I think it was FASB, whatever, and it's uh, got a code by the accountants. And they basically said, look, if you have an investment, either you marked, uh, marked you can uh, hold it to maturity, HTM, or you uh, have a, an available for sale accounting, which means you buy and sell and you market to market or market to best value immediately. And what happened in the last couple of years is when interest rates reasonably low uh, or zero for a period of time, money flowing into the banks and staying in, in the commercial deposits uh, or basically uh, in a low cost bank deposit or whatever, mm. or a checking account, all of a sudden, everybody starts lending, borrowing, and making investments, long thinking they could buy a 10-year T-bill, a Treasury, not bill, but a Treasury note. And now, all of a sudden, you, with the, the public annual reports coming out, you look with a laser on them, and you see the uh, losses that have not been recognized. Right, lots of and surprises, you, right, because, because rates went up so fast. And I, I wonder, kind of connected to that and the overall economic situation, what is your base assumption for what happens to the consumer in the back half of the year because of reduced savings, yeah, uh, more yeah. credit card debt, and how that affects stocks? Uh, it's a great uh, look. We don't look at things that sh uh, slowly. Look, I started my firm and uh, I started as a sell side analyst in 1966. The Dow was 1,000. 15 years later, after I had already, uh, when I started my firm, it was 1,000. So, you know, uh, I think uh, during the next uh, uh, period of time, the markets may be flat for two or three years, but you can still make a lot of money, which we did during that relevant period. So that's my uh, th dynamic. Now, let's go back to your de uh, details. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, in October of 2022, the last time they issued some numbers, and they're going to update them shortly, said the world GDP is going to be $108 trillion. Of the $108 trillion, of the $108 trillion China is 20 percent. The United States is 24 percent. And Europe is 17. I am in this camp that you have to look globally. And China is going to be up sharply in the second half of 2024 versus the second half of 2021. And that will have an impact on macro demand, everything constant in the geopolitical world. The second part is the United States. Look at the consumer. The balance sheet just came out for the fourth quarter. Consumer wealth was very substantially above expectations at that period of time. Loans are 18 trillion up from 13 trillion. So there's spending power. Now let's break the consumer down. It's 70 percent of GDP. And I don't look at this stuff. I just know it. But uh, autos, which I'm importantly involved in, because we uh, that's one of our ecosystems that we have accumulated and compounded knowledge on. Autos uh, inventory at the dealer level at the end of March. I think uh, the industry has, and I, I live with the number about 1.9 million. The average for the previous 10 years was 3.9. And even if they don't order that much, that is going to be an important part that, of that ecosystem. Then the second part is the consumer obviously has to have higher wages to offset the, the inflation that you saw today in terms of wages. Mm -hmm. Rents were supposed to come down. They didn't come down. So those are the dynamics. Now, more importantly than that, when I look at the balance sheets of companies, the managements this cycle have finally learned how to deal with uh, how to deal with uh, buying inventory, how to pass through pricing, how to adjust their contracts. Mm. And so that the learning curve of working capital for the industrial part, which is not as important as in the 70s, but it's still important, uh, is, a, is a, they, they're handling that inventory and commodities and you doubled orders, you're canceling orders. So those are pretty uh, dynamic uh, elements.